so let's start from the beginning. Can you see the top of the document? Um, it starts with energy stores. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it says a system is an object or a group of objects. So many a time in exam papers, you'll see um, uh, one marker is asking you what is a system. Okay, so straight away we know a system is an object or a group of objects. An object or When a system changes, the way energy is stored also changes. Okay, so they've given some examples there. So a ball uh, rolling and hitting a wall. So the, so the system is uh, a moving ball. When it hits the wall, the kinetic energy is transferred as sound energy. Okay, so um, here's, here's a ball and it's rolling. all the way to a wall when it hits the wall. Okay? Um, and then when it hits the wall, up until this point, it's all kinetic, right? Yeah. Um, but when it hits the wall, it makes a sound or a sound of impact, and um, that's how it releases that energy. So it goes from kinetic to sound energy, okay? So when it says a system changes, um, the way the energy is stored is also changed. This is the way that the energy is stored. It went from kinetic stored to a, um, to um, being a sound energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so um, the object in this uh, system is the ball, right? Um, uh, and the wall as well, okay? Um, another example is a vehicle slowing down. So a vehicle slowing down, so it says the system is uh, the vehicle moving. So the fact that the car or the vehicle has some kinetic energy, that is the system. And it says when it slows down, kinetic transfer transfers to thermal energy. So um, for example, when you have a car moving, right? The car is moving in, let's say, this direction. And then you hit the brakes and it slows down and it comes to a halt. Okay. When it's moving, it has kinetic and then you hit the brakes, right? And remember how uh, brakes work. If this is the disc, yeah, or you can imagine it when you're looking at a cycle, a bicycle, the pads are here, okay? When you hit the brakes, those pads, they touch the disc. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when they hit at this point here, all that movement, it stops the movement and uh, transpires as thermal energy on these pads. Okay, so if you were to touch those pads after braking, then they'll be really hot and really warm. However, prior to braking, they're gonna be cold and normal. Um, and why is that? Because it hasn't transferred to thermal energy yet. So this friction builds up and causes um, thermal energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in this example, the system is the car um, and, um, the change of the system change is the fact that it goes from being kinetic to being thermal. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we've already come across our first formula and that is calculating um, energy. So the first calculating energy formula is kinetic energy. So let's write it down. Okay. So, um, the formula is E equals a half mv squared, okay, uh, where m is the mass, v is the velocity, v is the velocity, well done, or speed, okay. And uh, E is the kinetic energy. Um, am I missing anything? No. Okay, so let's go through the units as well. Units are very important. 
kinetic energy is measured in joules mass is measured in kilograms and the velocity speed is measured in um, meters per second yeah yeah okay so um, there's two ways you could be asked about calculations pertaining to this formula okay um, I'll give you two examples so the first one is a uh, object of, of mass so an object of mass um, 50 kilograms yeah is uh, traveling at a speed of 27 meters per second and then you may be asked to work out the kinetic energy okay so this is very simple and straightforward we just use the formula e equals a half mv squared um, let's double check that all the units are in the right format before we even use the formula so they're both in kg yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so as you can see they're both in uh, kg um, and the speed are both in meters per second um, so let's plug it in so a half times 50 squared times 27 have I made any mistakes there no are you sure 27 squared correct yeah so it's supposed to be half times 27 squared times oh. mass. okay so um, can someone hit that into their calculator Wait, times what? Um, 50, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's equal to 18,225. Yeah, so 18,000. Yeah? Now, this is in joules. Yeah. Uh, maybe a more sensible way to represent this is in kilojoules. So, what can I do to this number? Divide it by a thousand. Exactly. Um, so the lesson point will be here right now. I've got three zeros, so I can just move it in three times. Once, twice, thrice. So it will be 18.225 kilojoules. Okay? Um, yeah. Let's explore another way that this formula can be uh, used. So this time, um, let's say uh, in a system, um, energy exerted is 270 kilojoules and the object was traveling at um, 20 kilometers per hour and I'd like you to find out the mass of the object. Okay, so can you see it's a little bit more complicated now, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, straight away we want to start converting things to a more suitable unit. Uh, suitable unit. So this straight away, we know it's in kilojoules, so to convert it to joules, it's going to be 270 times. Thousand. Thousand. Thousand, well done. Um, so we just add the three zeros in the end. Two, seven, zero, zero. Two hundred seventy thousand. Zero. Yeah, exactly. So that's ready to go. Uh, and then we've got kilometers per hour. Now, before we even look at the hour, let's just look at the kilometers. So we want to put it in meters per second. Okay, so we have to figure out how many meters in a kilometer. Thousand. A thousand. So first we do 20 times a thousand. And that gives us 20,000. 20, so right now it's 20,000 meters per hour. Per hour. So you have to divide by 60, right? So that will be per minute. So if we want to convert it to oh, yeah. seconds, it's going to be, again, another 60. So divided by 60 times by 60, because this is per minutes and this is per second. Okay? Yeah. So 60 times 60 is going to be 3,600. Can someone hit that to the calculator, please? 5.5. 5.5. 5. 
5.5 meters per second. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be 5.5 meters per second. Let me just double check that. Yes. Exactly. Five, five, so 5.5 reoccurring. So we'll just, just for you know, being simple, um, it's going to be 5.5. Okay. So uh, now we can revisit the formula. So we know that the velocity is this. And uh, we know that the energy is 270000 joules. So let's go back to the formula. So it's going to be 270000 equals a half times, now the mass we don't know, so we're going to leave it as mass, times by 5.5 squared. So what's 5.5 squared? 30.25. 30 point what, sorry? 25. So 30 point two five four. I just did it in the calculator as three five point five recurring times five point five recurring. So it's gonna be thirty point eight six times by a half. So that'll just be half of that, which will probably be fifteen something. Yeah, agreed? So mass times fifteen point Four is where we're at at the moment. Let's make some space there. So take it to the bottom here. So m times fifteen point four equals this two thousand seven hundred. I mean two hundred seventy thousand value. Um, we want m on its own, and fifteen is timesing by it on the left. So what does it do on the right? Divide. Divide. Can you guys tell me what you get in your calculator, please? One seven five three two point four six seven five three. Okay. All right. I used the actual values, and I got um one seven four nine six. Okay. And because we already um had converted everything to appropriate units this would be um, automatically in kilograms, okay? Yeah. Let's move on.